G'day and welcome, my name's Matthew. Have you ever thought, this little air pump that comes with my laser machine, is it doing a good enough job? Now some of these pump about 70 litres a minute, this one here pumps 150 litres a minute. Is that enough air to do what I need to do? Is it worthwhile upgrading to an air compressor? Will upgrading to an air compressor improve the results that I get out of my laser machine? Aren't air compressors all noisy? I don't want all that noise in my workshop. So to address that question first about air compressors, no, not all air compressors are noisy. Uh, this air compressor down here is a silenced six, uh, 50 litre air compressor and it has uh, silences on the compressors themselves and a noise rating of only 60 decibels. Compared to a similar uh, unit, roughly the same size and output, and uh, that uh, is decibel rating of 97. So this is a lot quieter than those. So first you'll need an air compressor that's capable of keeping up with the air pressure that you require for the type of work that you're doing on your laser machine. I recommend a silenced air compressor with a volume of 50 litres of more. Uh, smaller units may be sufficient for the type of uh, work that you do, um, depending on how long your mach laser machine's running for each job that you're cutting out. And uh, that's a very important factor to consider when you're sourcing your air compressor. And I'll demonstrate this in a moment. There are some great air compressors available. Now this one that I purchased here in Australia is from CD. However, if you're outside Australia, other air compressors that I've heard that are very suitable are those from California Air Tools. And I'll leave links to the description below for these products. So I've got my air compressor here and uh, that's all been plumbed in through this uh, black hose here. Next, you'll need a flow regulator with a water trap. Now water vapor is a byproduct of compressing air and the amount of vapor produced is depending upon the environment, the humidity and the temperature that your compressor is operating in. It is recommended that you drain the uh, water out of your trap regularly. You can pull that down and drain the water out. You can put a little uh, rubber hose on that so that it flows away and doesn't dribble in your machine. And also on the bottom of the air compressor, you also have a drain valve. Just check your user manual for your air compressor on how to drain. Failure to drain water from your compressor regularly could result in rust forming inside the tank and obviously decreasing the lifespan or the longevity of your um, equipment. The air regulator that I purchased here it came with some standard Nito push fittings and I've removed those and using a quarter inch thread I've replaced it with these push fittings for the uh, six millimeter air pipe and those ones are just pushed to connect so you can just push them, disconnect them, push them in to lock them into place. So we have our air line coming from our air compressor and out the other side. On the back of this uh, flow regulator we also have an arrow indicating the direction of airflow. Once you have your pressure regulator hooked up, then you can use the dial on the top to dial up the required pressure that you're going to be supplying to your laser nozzle. And I can dial up the PSI or the required pressure that I want for the cut. So if I'm cutting um, timbers like ply boards, then I'd have a higher pressure and uh, it'll give me a nice clean cut. But if I'm going to be cutting things like acrylic, then I dial that pressure down. And I can do that using the dial here but this does not override the minimal airflow to the laser nozzle. And that is done using the tap and the pneumatic solenoid valve. So I'm gonna set this one here for now at 30 PSI. I use the Ultimate Air Assist installation on my laser machines and I highly recommend this upgrade if you do not already have a similar system installed. I'll leave links to the upgrade for the CloudRay Lasers Ultimate Air Assist in the description below. So this is the pneumatic solenoid here and we've got the air coming in from the air compressor. There is a dial here to reduce the flow of air going through to the nozzle when the air is set to the off on the layer that you're cutting. But uh, in between here I've installed the tap that come from the nozzle. That is because this little dial doesn't um, reduce the airflow as much as I'd like it to. So I can actually dial it up using this tap as well. That then goes into the T-piece and that black tube then runs off to the uh, nozzle at the laser tube. This valve on the bottom of the air assist solenoid uh, controls the airflow to the nozzle when you have selected air off on the cut or the engraving layer in your software. 
If you select air off for the layer, you still require a small amount of airflow to protect the uh, focus lens from fouling with uh, smoke or fumes. And you do this, you dial this va valve in until you achieve the minimal airflow that you require. In my case, I wanted less than the lowest of this setting. So I relocated the tap from the nozzle that came in the kit and uh, inserted it here between the restriction valve and the air hose through to the laser nozzle. It just gives me a little bit more control over the airflow. And adjust that tap until there's just enough air to come out here, just enough to protect the lens. You don't need a fast flow at all. When you have air set on for a cut in your software, then this tap is bypassed and the air pressure that is being dialed on the regulator is the air that will be supplied to the nozzle. So now we have it all set up. What air pressure is required? Now that depends on what you're cutting. Now I've tested with various materials and the, uh, the results for each vary. So for this uh, few tests, I'm gonna be showing you some examples using some three millimeter plywood, some six millimeter MDF board, as well as some 10 millimeter clear acrylic. This first cut I'm doing out of the three millimeter plywood, and I'm just using the regular air pump that came with the laser machine. As we can see, there's a little bit of a residue around the edges of the cut. For this next cut, I'm connecting up the air compressor and I've dialed the air pressure to 30 psi. The focus gap, the speed and the power are identical to the previous cut. And you can see already that the cut is a lot cleaner and uh, more crisp than the original cut. So I've placed the two cuts that we've just made uh, side by side here on the screen. So the top one is the regular air pump, the bottom one was the air compressor. You notice that the smoke from the air pump uh, circulates to the top of the workpiece rather than towards the air extraction, whereas the high pressure from the air compressor seems to force the air lower into the machine towards the extraction unit. So here we have some six millimeter MDF board. And again, I've set the focus height and the speed and power the same for both these tests. And this is using the standard air pump. And as you can see, there's a smoky residue on the top of the workpiece. Now I've connected the air compressor with 30 PSI pressure at the nozzle. And you can see immediately that the cut is a lot cleaner and that there's less smoke coming out the top of the cut. And if we put all those cuts side by side, again, you can see the air pump on the left hand side and the air compressor set at 30 PSI and the cuts are a lot cleaner with the air compressor. So it's definitely an improvement and a worthwhile upgrade to your machine. So I thought, why would I stop at uh, six millimeter MDF when I'm regularly do need to cut nine millimeter and 12 millimeter board? And uh, I had the air pressure set for these tests just a little bit higher at 40 to 45 PSI. Uh, some power reduced a little bit uh, and the speed down to seven millimeters a second. And we've been able to cut nicely through the uh, nine millimeter. It's clean front and back without any residue around the edge. And the same as the 12 millimeter uh, MDF board. It's nice and clean and it's a really good cut. And when you rub your finger along the side, there's no residue or smokiness that's there. I also noticed that uh, when I've got the air compressor on, the uh, fume and the smoke extraction is a lot better as it's blowing the smoke out the bottom towards the exhaust fan. So let's have a look at the uh, 10 millimeter acrylic. Uh, what I've got again is uh, 10 millimeters. I've raised it off the honeycomb table so that we don't get any flashback. Now this first cut I'm running with the air compressor set at uh, 30 psi and we're cutting uh, very slowly at about 4 millimeters a second and uh, 26 milliamps. You can see that we have some frosting along the edge when we have the uh, air pressure on. So this next cut that I'm going to do, I'm going to reduce the air pressure to about 5 psi. Again, same focus height, same speed and power and we're cutting again, raised off the uh, honeycomb table to avoid any flashback or any um, a distortion on the bottom of the cut. And then what we'll do is we'll have a look at these two cuts side by side. And we can see here that we have the one on the left hand side is the first cut, this one here, which is uh, at 30 PSI. And we have that frosting or fogging on the top of the cut. It's not a very good cut. Whereas the one on the right hand side with very low PSI of around about five, 
PSI, then we can actually see it's a nice polished finish and we can read the text through it. It should be noted that I only used a two inch lens for these tests. Normally if you are cutting these sort of thicknesses, I'd recommend a four inch lens and I'll discuss more about lens selection in a future video. So earlier I mentioned uh, to select an air compressor that can keep up with the type of work you're doing. This compressor that I purchased for the task is a silenced air compressor with a 50 litre tank. And I dialed up the pressure regulator to the laser at 30 psi and the supply from the compressor to approximately 75 psi. Then I started this 45 minute job and the air compressor was able to keep up without any problems. It maintained a constant air pressure at the compressor of 75 psi and uh, to the nozzle from the regulator at 30 psi. I was also very impressed with the results of the cuts. This job uh, normally takes me 45 minutes to an hour. Uh, the cuts were extremely clean. I didn't have to clean any of the parts and um, the air compressor made a huge difference. So do I believe that this uh, upgrade is worthwhile to do on your laser machine? Well, if set up properly, you should notice some great results and improvements in the cuts that you're performing with your laser. In my experience, it's been extremely worthwhile, and I've also heard from other CO2 laser users that their results by using the air compressor compared to the regular air pump have been exceptional. During a discussion of air compressors and laser machines, I come across this quote from Oz at Lightburn Software on the Lightburn Support Forum, and he states that he'd bought the five gallon air compressor before his laser had arrived, and he just never connected it up. He was trying to cut through half inch or 12 millimeter plywood and no matter how slow or how many passes it took, he just ended up charring the hell out of it. And by the time he got all the way through, it looked like he'd used an acetylene torch and not a laser. Then after connecting the air compressor, he retried cutting at seven mil a second in a single pass. It has clean cuts all the way through, no smoke residue on each side. He says it's a completely different machine and he was honestly unprepared for how much of a difference it made. He's kicking himself for not having done this sooner. Now the Lightburn Forum is a great resource for the CO2 laser machine users and Lightburn software support. The web address is uh, forum.lightburnsoftware.com. Well that wraps up this video. If you like the video give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to be notified when I release new videos. And as I mentioned I'll put links in the description below of the products that I used. Uh, the air compressor recommendations as well as the ultimate air assist kit from Cloud Ray Laser. Until next time, take care. Cheers.